first of four, police say it looks like an elderly man made a big mistake when he tried to be nice. He ended up dead. New information in a homicide case. Also a global turning point in the battle against COVID-19. But the good news comes with a warning about the future. Plus, it looks like the weekend forecast is changing. Hey, Kim. There is a change. You might not like it, but first we get a nice sunny evening here in Metro Detroit with temperatures in the upper 60s to right around 70 degrees. We'll talk about that change in just a couple minutes. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, a new homicide charge comes with a word of warning to senior citizens about what kind of people that they invite into their homes. 50-year-old Jeffrey Locke is charged in the death of 69-year-old resident of Canton, Glenn McLean. Police, I should say Glenn McLean, police say Locke befriended the older man and then would stay at his home helping to repair McLean's multiple cars. Well, on May 2nd, family members reported McLean was and one of his cars was missing. Police say Locke was actually driving that missing car and McLean's body was found in the trunk. Locke is being held on $100,000 cash bond. A man from Canton is facing a seven count indictment for conspiring to produce child pornography and other related offenses. Federal prosecutors describe a disturbing chain of events involving 49 year old Charles Callahan Lowe. They say he texted instructions to a sex trafficker in the Philippines detailing the sexually abusive material he wanted to see over a live webcam. They say Lowe exchanged over 1600 texts with that trafficker and sent wire payments over Western Union at Rite Aid stores near his home. Right now Lowe is only indicted and must still undergo a trial. The aftermath of a deadly crash was spread all over westbound 696 near Gratiot this morning after a heart stopping wrong way crash. State police tell us a 62 year old man from Harper Woods was killed when a Jeep Liberty just plowed into oncoming traffic driving east in the westbound lanes. Another motorist grabbed video as MSP troopers tried to catch up to the Jeep to get the driver's attention, but the Jeep crashed into another vehicle, killing that driver. The driver of the Jeep and a passenger have minor injuries. State police suspect both were intoxicated at the time. We'll have a live update on the investigation when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. First responders will be holding a drill this weekend that will impact travel to Canada for a few hours. The Detroit Windsor Tunnel is going to close for part of Sunday morning from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. The tunnel CEO says the annual exercise is critical part of keeping travelers safe. So if you do need to cross the border Sunday morning, pop on over to the Ambassador Bridge. Things should be back to normal at the tunnel by 10 a.m. Okay, so it looks like we're going to end the week on a high note with some higher temperatures. Warming trend continues right now. Let's jump into our forewarned first forecast with Kim Adams. Well, Karen, we are ending this week on a much nicer note than what we started with, which was some wet snow, especially in the northern suburbs. But now we end the week with sunshine and temperatures in the upper 60s, even some 70s popping up on the map, including Howell, which is right now at 70 degrees, 67 at Metro Airport and City Airport, 63 in Mount Clemens, 67 in Pontiac. This evening, if you are maybe celebrating outside for Cinco de Mayo and eating outside, it's going to be a nice night, but it will get chilly rather quickly once the sun sets. We drop down into the mid to upper 50s and then the low 50s by midnight tonight. Tomorrow looks like a beautiful day. Lots of sunshine temperatures where they should be in the upper 60s. But there is a change to the weekend forecast and that change is a few thunderstorms on Sunday. So we'll time it out for you hour by hour and talk about the chance for severe weather coming up in the forecast. All right, thank you, Kim. Well, the job market continues to head in a surprising direction in spite of inflation, rising interest rates and a banking crisis. The Labor Department says America's employers added 253,000 jobs in April. That pushed unemployment down to 3.4 percent. That matches a 54 year low. In addition, hourly wages rose last month at the fastest pace since last July. That could worry the Federal Reserve as more jobs and higher wages could boost inflation, which is desperately trying to lower. Well, it has been a long, stressful, controversial fight to make it through COVID-19. Well, now we've reached an encouraging milestone. Today, the World Health Organization says the virus no longer qualifies as a global emergency. Kimberly Gill joins us now to talk about exactly what that means and also talk about a looming deadline. That's right. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon to you. It's been a long three years since the World Health Organization first declared the emergency back in January of 2020. Remember the lockdowns, the race for a vaccine and so many families touched by illness 
and death. The director of the World Health Organization says the virus downward trend for more than a year has allowed most countries to return to a normal life. Today's announcement marks a symbolic end to the pandemic that killed millions of people worldwide, but the threat has not completely disappeared everywhere. The, double, uh, the World Health Organization says there have been recent COVID spikes in Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Plus, thousands of people continue to die from the virus every week. The director general hopes the world can learn lessons from what went wrong during the pandemic. Globally, a lack of coordination, a lack of equity, and a lack of solidarity meant that those tools were not used as effectively as they could have been. Lives were lost that should not have been. We must promise ourselves and our children and grandchildren that we will never make those mistakes again. We also want to remind you the U.S. government is going to stop paying for free COVID tests next week. So you have six days to stock up if you'd like to have some in your home in case you ever think you have COVID. The deadline is May 11th. Also check the expiration dates on many test kits you already have because many have been extended. You can look on the FDA's website to see which tests are good. And May 11th is when our government is set to end the public health emergency here in the United States. Still, though, billions of people around the world remain unvaccinated. And that's something something that certainly you can consider as you make plans to protect yourself and your family uh, coming up this summer and the rest of the year. So Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Well, we are also about to see a changing of the guard over at the Centers for Disease the Control and Prevention. Dr. Rochelle Walensky just announced she's leaving her job as director. She shared the news at a meeting this afternoon. Her resignation letter to President Biden says as the pandemic wanes, now is a good time to make a transition. The president says Walensky led the CDC through a challenging time with honesty and integrity. Her last day will be June 30th. Now, coincidentally, Dr. Anthony Fauci is on the campus of Michigan State University right now. He's giving a commencement speech for more than 9,500 graduates this afternoon. You'll recall Fauci was the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases through much of the pandemic. Cue the music. Let's take a live look over at Buckingham Palace in London. It is just after 9 p.m. there right now. All quiet, but... Millions of eyes will be gazing in that direction over the next 24 hours. The majesty of the monarchy on full display. People all over the world will be watching the coronation of Britain's King Charles III. The streets of London will be full and the coverage will be seen worldwide. America's First Lady Jill Biden is already in London. She's leading the delegation to the big event. Today, she stopped at the famous 10 Downing Street to meet the wife of the Prime Minister. Now, Dr. Biden will also attend a reception tonight hosted by King Charles and Queen Camilla at Buckingham Palace. Today has been a whirlwind of activity for the king who was meeting with leaders of the nations that are part of the British Commonwealth, but he's also making time for regular folks. The king went for a quick walkabout outside Buckingham Palace, taking time to chat and shake hands. Prince William and Princess Kate were also on hand to say hello and take some selfies. One of the more colorful displays in London is this giant bejeweled crown at the city's marble arc. It's a replica of the St. Edward's crown that will be used during the coronation and put onto the new monarch's head. This version is about 16 feet high and uses 36 different glass stones. NBC found one American whose love affair with British royalty makes this trip so special for her. This is not my first time being to London, so I'm, you know, I do all the touristy things and go to Hampton Court Palace and the Tower of London and get really excited. So um, to have the opportunity to be here for the coronation, I thought was going to be really special. My friends think I'm crazy, but whatever. <laughs> NBC will have team coverage of the countdown to coronation tonight on Nightly News with Lester Holt at 6.30 right here on Local 4. You can also watch live NBC coverage of the coronation on Saturday morning. That starts at 5 a.m. Then watch Local 4 News from 10 a.m. to noon. That's all followed by the Kentucky Derby countdown, a blockbuster Saturday here on Local 4.